Welcome to the Whitetail Obsession Podcast with Dave Richmond and co-host Chris Worthing, where we talk and teach everything deer and turkey hunting related. Follow along as we help teach you tips and techniques about hunting, food plots, and habitat management strategies that everyone can use. That's just because you're old and you got no blood flow. That too. I'm keeping that in the podcast, by the way. I will kill you. Episode, huh? I will share your thumbnail out. Do it again. <laughs> I will share it out. The I, I saw man. I saw that and I looked like Angry Dave. Angry Dave. Yep. Like when you lost my socket in the woods. Yeah, whatever. Podcast 67, guys. I'm keeping all that in the podcast. So just so you know, it's podcast 67. Oh, geez. Somebody will find it funny. Someone will find it funny. Yeah. Or that other guy will say that we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. We're never ready. Oh, yeah. We're never ready. Always fooling around. Always fooling around. Yep. Uh, So we got a few discussions tonight and just a couple things to talk about. Uh, One may get me fired up a smidge. Um, But other than that, it's a pretty pretty laid back, peaceful podcast here. Yeah. Right? Unless you're Mm -hmm. grumpy. I'm always grumpy. Chris is grumpy again, guys. Yeah. I got too much stuff going on. I hear you. Um, okay, so why don't we just get a couple things out of the way here, uh, real quick, and then we'll jump into everything. Um, I leave tomorrow for a, for a consulting visit in South Central Virginia, and uh, it's 300 acres, so I'm gonna be down there for three days. And mm. um, instead of getting a hotel this time, I booked an Airbnb. <laughs> And it was cheaper than a hotel. And I get an entire house that it's a cabin that sits on the water. I get an entire house to myself. Mm-hmm. No hotel. I ain't got to deal with a hotel or nothing. Best thing ever. So I'm a, on these extended consulting trips more than one day. I'll get a hotel. If it's just one day or something, I get a hotel. But if it's more than one day, I'm going with these Airbnbs. So do you like pack your own food for that or what? Yeah. Bring your own food. Uh, they provide the towels, the pots and pans, the grills, the laundry detergent, like everything. Huh. You just have to bring food. And I like it because usually if I'm consulting or something for a day or two, I'm eating, you know, Wawa or Sheets gas station food. Hey. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, like today, I went grocery shopping. I'm taking my own food with me. They got a grill there. I can grill food, chicken, whatever. I can cook my all my own food. So huh. Airbnb is going to be where it's at for these extended days. Yeah. And it was 30, 30 bucks cheaper a night hmm. than, a, than a hotel. So, well, in a, in a week or so here, I'm going to be going down to, uh, and you know the guy. Remember Chris, the state cop? Yeah. I'm going to be, we talked last night. I'm going to be heading down his place next week here. He's on vacation for a week. When he gets back, we're going to hook up and go down, check out his property. He's He's got a new chunk there. He wants to show me that, that uh, we didn't look at last time when we was there. That's the one, the prop or the guy we planted for, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. That's cool. Yep. So I'll be doing that next week, about this time, probably when he gets home. He's visiting his son. Nice. So that's um, what I got going on. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and then, as everybody had watched my YouTube video, I lost my drone. So, yeah, you didn't even tell me. I found out in the comment section. Yeah. And I so, was going to be a jerk and write some stupid stuff, but I thought, no, because I would be highly upset if I lost my drone. Yeah, so, uh, so I, was I, was nice. at, I was at the farm last week, and I did some cutting, which we'll get into at the end of this. But um, I haven't flown my drone in two years. And it was ex- very expensive. It was, well, not, I shouldn't say very expensive. It, so it was operator air. Well, not this time. <laughs> uh, I paid $800 for the drone. Eight hundred dollars, and it was a good drone. It wasn't nowhere near top of the line, but it was a DJI drone. Took amazing video, stability, like it was smooth video, everything. Haven't flew it, flown it in two years. Well, I decided I said, man, I I got to get back into aerial videos and stuff like that. So I took it with me. Now, all I wanted to do was take it over the over the woods and um, get like an an aerial view of where I was cutting at. To explain it better in the video well i put it i started it up 
connected to my phone. The battery said 99%. I was like, good to go. I took it up, straight up. I started flying it real slow, and I was recording the video. I was taking it back, take it back. I did what I had to do. I went a little bit further. I turned it around as it was coming back. I mean, it, not that far. It was coming back. The battery went from 99% to 1%. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking out. I got full throttle trying to come back to me. Nope. It started landing. It was going down, down. And I could still steer it. And I tried to steer it in a, you can see in the video where I tried to steal, uh, steer it into a, an open area in the woods. No. It lost before it crashed. The battery it fully died. And these things have GPS. So I literally tracked it. GPS, I looked for hours. Hmm. No drone. It's stuck in a treetop or something. Oh, my. So long story short, um, that drone is gone. And I had to buy another drone, which it's funny. When I bought that drone, they were drones were really expensive. The one I got now is an upgrade from that one and i only paid 300 bucks for it because oh, so it's way cheaper <laughs> way cheaper hmm. which i haven't flown it yet um i'm gonna take it with me on a consulting trip and see if he'll let me take some uh aerial videos i, I gotta talk to him about it but That's um cool. yeah so um let's jump into it all right uh you you had a topic tonight uh, um you saw a bunch of people talking about so uh what is that yeah we see i was looking around the internet and i seen <clears throat> Uh, some folks talking about uh, signs signs that uh, they have too many deer, mm. and and one of the things one of the things I just read tonight uh, a local a local paper reported that Pennsylvania has killed in two consecutive years now over four hundred thousand deer in a season each season. Each season, so mm -hmm. that's eight hundred thousand deer killed in two years. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking like we got a critical condition here. I mean, no wonder you're having all these collisions and things, and you know, insurance companies are paying out all this money. Obviously, we, we got a really we got a big uptick in population happening here, an explosion. And I think a lot of it happens to be because, you know, the, the younger generation's not interested anymore and the older generation's dying off. Right. You know, and I I don't think. I, I think there's a there's a a lack of people hunting, but yet they're saying we, we're killing more and more deer. How is that possible? You know, well, the population is coming up and people are getting a lot of licenses, I believe, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven doe tags or whatever, you know. So they are, they, they're saying we're killing a lot of deer, but, you know, but you, you can drive down a road or something. You, you don't very rarely see other people hunting, you know. Yeah, I, I noticed, yeah, I've noticed that too, where in PA, I just, I mean, where my farm is, I have to pass public land. Mm -hmm. And very seldom do I see people there. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just area specific. And, you know, maybe they're killing, slaughtering them in other places. But I'm not seeing, like, I'm not saying they're lying. But I'm just wondering where these statistics come from sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because it just doesn't seem to be jiving out. I mean. Well, one minute, one minute, the game commission's crying, saying that you know we don't have any people hunting anymore, and then they turn around and say we've got two record kills two years in a row. You know, how, how is that? So I just did a simple Google search, and it's saying there's 1.5 million deer in PA. Okay. And it says there's an estimated 1.5 million deer, about 30 deer per square mile, which is pretty average. Um, yeah, so 1.5 million deer. That's right. esti estimated. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I just. Well, so so we posed the question. How do you yeah. know? How right. do you know how many deer you have on your property? I mean, without doing a survey, you know, yeah. or, or a drone thermal drone, you know, count or something. But uh, what's the signs that you have 
too many deer in your area. Well, what, real what quick, I, I wanted to touch on something real quick before we get into that is that the numbers that these guys that the that they come up with, I don't think they're accurate at all. And the reason I say that is because in Maryland, people play the system. So what happens in Maryland is when you buy your license, you automatically get a do um, a buck tag and doe tags. Most counties in Maryland, in Maryland, there is unlimited does. You're allowed to get a second buck tag, okay? But in order to kill your second buck, you have to kill two does. So what people do is they shoot a buck. And then they call in because it's a phone system. You call in a doe the next day. You call in a doe the next day. And then boom, even though you didn't kill a doe. Right. All of a sudden, boom, you kill two does. You can go buy a second yeah, buck. Tag. They just they just fraudulently say, hey, right. I, I killed my two does. So now I'm going after yes. my second buck. So they're gotcha. getting these numbers. Gotcha. And all of a sudden, okay, that's two does killed. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. But how many people are doing that? Right. And how is Pennsylvania getting these numbers are because, you know, that they're going by license sales. But then in Pennsylvania, obviously, if you kill a deer, you have to re you're supposed you to, to report. report it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the numbers, I believe, like people aren't not everybody's truthful, but. The no, I don't think the numbers are accurate at all. Yeah, I just wonder, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, sometimes I just, I, I question it, you know, just like the bear numbers too. You know, they're always saying that every year they're like, oh, record kill, you know, and it's like, wow, how, how are they figuring it out? You know? Right. Yeah. There's I mean, a lot of variables, I guess. I don't know. But anyhow, so, yeah. so what's some signs you think that uh, we've got too many deer in our area? Well, right off the top of my head, I would say, um, unhealthy skinny looking deer okay um and i've noticed that some areas in maryland have it when you when you start getting um in areas where there's a bunch of houses and things and they they tear out woods and they build houses and it crams all these deer crunched mm -hmm. together yeah um you start looking at the deer and they're just scraggly looking you know yeah. the ribs are showing well in areas that don't have that situation where the where the deer per square mile aren't say above 30 or something 25 30 those you don't see the ribs so there's a clear indication with the ribs showing i bring that up all the time and i don't really and honestly i that lit my brain up at the old farm when that first year that i because in maryland i net the areas that i used i've hunted my entire life I've never seen deer that the ribs were showing. Right. At when I got that lease at the old farm, I was like, "There's something wrong with these deer." <laughs> it was like they're they're all the ribs are showing. Right. And when I when I started walking a property, I'm like, "There's no food." Nothing here. And Man. when I started putting trail cameras out, I think I showed you, but they were eating pine needles, mm -hmm. which is a you know low on the totem pole for <clears throat> food source. But um, yeah, I would say. Just like looking at the deer wise, it just fit the physical appearance. Yeah. If you see rib showing, there's something going on. Okay. So, so in my area, something, a physical attribute that you can actually go out and walk and see is the high brows line. Mm -hmm. I mean, the brows line, six, seven feet tall, you mm -hmm. know, and you can, you can see through the woods for a long distance, you know, uh, any, anything that's palatable is browsed up real high and yeah, they're getting on their hind legs and getting stuff mm -hmm. yep that's that's one attribute here and that's hard to rebuild you know we had a couple people ask well how do you how do you how do you build your brows well that comes down to cutting trees again and getting sunlight down and mm -hmm. you know allowing stuff to 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 uh sprout up Man managing your forest but i hunt public land so i can't go do that you know mm -hmm. so when you, you gotta find it yeah so you you gotta really go around and scrounge and you know maybe find a an area where a storm went through and 
and knocked on, you know, some windfalls or something, you know, knocked on a bunch of trees or something like that, where it lets light down and then you get all that scrubby stuff growing up, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. But that was something I thought about, you know, you got any more? You can think yeah. Of? I mean, yeah. Uh, I, again, uh, example, the old farm when, you know, you were, you were scouted too, is that that place did have a select cut like mm-hmm. five years previous to us hunting it. Mm-hmm. Even then it was still, it was still closed canopy a little, mm-hmm. they didn't, they didn't take a whole bunch, but there was woody regeneration coming out of the ground, but it was lip high. Yeah. All the deer were and they were consuming everything they possibly could. Right. Um, and then if you have, for instance, if you have like uh Honey, if you have like a bunch of honeysuckle on your property or autumn olive or something and they're eating that they're hungry dude yeah there's not because there's higher quality stuff that they can be eating but when when you're hungry when i get hungry i get angry <laughs> i get feisty He's like angry. i agree yeah i get hangry i you know i'll eat anything and that's how deer are when they're when you're freaking hungry i mean what deer eat what four five six seven pounds of food per day um I mean, you got to do something. And if you look across the country, the limiting factor is unmanaged forests. You know, they're, they're, everything's closed canopy. There's no sunlight hitting hitting the ground. Um, you got to have food. And um, it starts with, uh, I mean, you can use food plots as a supplemental program, but it really, the base of it starts with um, managing the forest. Another another sign around here, like where I'm at, is all the deer stick close to the houses and the camps, mm-hmm. you know, and because not only is is there some structure and safety there and in numbers, too, because they they seem to herd up around here like that. And but what they do is they they rummage our neighborhoods at night, you know, for anything you've got you know plants and right now all the all the flowers are trying to come up they're going along clipping right. off all the tulips and yep. and hostas and stuff you know in everybody's yard and eating their their, their shrubs and things mm-hmm. you know i mean so they they're sticking tight they know there's food here so they're hanging out you know and and if if i think if numbers were lower and they weren't running in these herds and things you know they would be more dispersed and they wouldn't be putting a, such a ponding around these houses and camps eating all the ornamental stuff mm-hmm. you know yeah i mean uh think about it the most scarce time of the year for deer is really you know december january february march <laughs> that's going to be at least where we're at that's a limited you know, you got to live three, four months of limited food. You hit March, end of March, April, you start, you know, things start greening up a little bit. Like here, you know, you drive down the road, it's always your, it's always your honeysuckle and, and all that stuff greening up first. Then you see your maples starting to bloom out. But I mean, obviously deer can eat them, but, um, but that's what you usually see is your, your honeysuckle and all that stuff greening up first. And then you know, okay, things are greening up. It's just a matter of time. Deer will have, you know, more food in the next few weeks coming up. Yeah. And it's then, getting to be that time where things yeah. start popping and, you know, the, the, the fields are starting to fill up around here right now, you know, cause mm-hmm. they, they, they can tell things are getting ready to go. Oh know? yeah. Like, um, the farmers and stuff around me, all the winter wheat, rye and stuff the, the you know, cover crops, they're green as could be. Yeah. So yeah. it's time where they're going to be having food. But when you're, when you're looking at a, at your hunting property, you got to think about those three to four months window. How can I fill that gap mm-hmm. of, of food? And is it, do you physically have too many deer or is it that maybe you have a bunch of properties around you? and you improved your property and you drew in these deer right and then they're just you know uh devouring everything on your property yeah which gives you the appearance of too many deer it's not that there's too many deer within that square mile it's just just the only place to come eat 
Right. It's the only <laughs> place to come in. Kind of like the situation you're go you got going on at your place. You know, you're getting tons of pictures right now in the, in your leftover food plot because the farmer field 30, 40 yards away is dead. He's dead. he sprayed it, plowed it. It's it's just an oasis of nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you still have some leftover stuff, so they're piling in there. Yeah. And I I think that's a good example is that like I like I said, that people should think about is you know, these agencies and these biologists and stuff, they come up with, okay, a healthy deer herd or you know, a healthy number per square mile is say twenty five to thirty. That's usually what you typically hear, and that's per square mile. Okay, well, there's a lot of variables in there. You know, some square miles may may be able to handle more because the the forest is managed better and there's more food. So, you know, just because you have 50 acres and you're seeing all these deer on your property, well, you're probably the only one in that area that's doing habitat improvements. So you're sucking in these deer. Mm-hmm. So it gives you this appearance of too many deer. And if that's the case, then either you have to shoot more, get some neighbors on board to, to kind of disperse, you know, disperse them a little bit, yeah. improve your timber a little bit so they don't devour your food plots. There's a lot. Of, there's so many variables in um in all of that stuff. Yeah, I've been I've been talking to my neighbors and asking them to shoot some more does mm-hmm. uh, because, you know we've when we do it seems like the deer are making rounds kind of like the turkeys do you know <laughs> you, they come around and then they're gone for two or three days and then they're back you know but when they come around you know they bring all their cousins and uncles and aunts with them man i'm telling you they <laughs> you see you know anywhere from six to nine deer all huddled up together are you, you know, talking I, neighbors on your side or the other side of the road um both both I, yeah i i was trying to talk with them all and seeing seeing if they would you know be willing to shoot some more does because uh i mean we the ratio's pretty out of whack right now uh so yeah i was i was trying to get trying to keep open communication with the neighbors you know see what they would want to do mm-hmm. i mean if they don't want to do it oh well i'll do my part to, you know kill as many as it as doe tags of I have, you know, I need to, I, I think this year I want to try to kill does, get TJ to kill does. And I might even have to get somebody else to come over and, and pop, pop a couple. If I can find somebody to mm-hmm. come up and shoot a couple of does, um, maybe, but yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just, I mean, we just, you, you got to balance it the way you, you, way you can. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I I mean, don't get me wrong. I love sitting in my tree stand having 25 deer in front of me. Mm-hmm. That's great because I have enough plot and field to support them. So I don't care. You know, I'm, but I do have a lot. And mm-hmm. if they're not on the property I'm managing, where are those 25 deer going elsewhere and demolishing you know, mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. ravishing someone else's property if they're not here. You know, if I wasn't feeding them, they're they're out ravishing something else. So, yeah, like, which I mean, I don't mind feeding them. You know. Yeah, which is a good point because you're seeing the concentration of them. If your food plots and stuff weren't there, those deer would be dispersed. They'd be probably separated. Yeah. You know, you have three over there, four over here, three over there. They wouldn't be concentrated. Yeah. So yeah. it's and, that, and that's uh, that kind of. That upsets a couple of the neighbors too, I believe, because uh, they're, you know, they'll live. They're not seeing as many deer on their pe- their little patch of ground, you know. You made them mad. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll get over it though. They'll yeah. get over it. Hey, I'm making healthy deer. Punch so, your own w- state. W- so when they do come across their land, they'll have one that they're not looking at rib cages. Are you excited about upcoming bucks this year? Or what? <laughs> I'm always excited about upcoming bucks. Heck yeah. You should have some good ones. Oh man, I, 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 not only did I have a deer problem, but so I say, I say I have a doe problem, but when archery season came, it was ridiculous. I had a buck problem 
it was just it was silly i mean i've never hunted an area where the and i don't know i don't know how to explain it but it it when i was in the tree stand i had multiple bucks in front of me up and comers you know nothing shootable but i had so many bucks i had more but i had more buck sightings than doe sightings you know when i'm when i'm saying i had 15 deer in front of me or whatever you know i had 10 of them were buck you know and only five doe and it's like what is going on here you have a doe usually factory. usually it's the opposite you have a doe factory usually you have the doe factory and you have you know 10 does and a couple of bucks last year was just insane so i if That's all factory. those if all those bucks made it which i'm sure 99 percent of them did probably oh my gosh there should be it should be a buck factory again this year you know which well I, now I'm, you got some i'm excited cell cams. you got some cell cams so i'm excited cool to see uh see what's what's over there yeah yeah i think i'm gonna get some of those uh lithium trays too yeah for at least two of them so i don't have to keep running out and replacing batteries right but that's another way to tell if you're uh if you've got too many deer get yourself some good cameras and get out there and take some inventory mm -hmm. how about it yeah do it you're you're a camera addict i am i just <laughs> i pre i just pre-ordered another camera silly yeah the guy's so, an addict a lot of people think we you know we all get free stuff but I buy stuff. So <laughs> well, no one's buying me them lithium trays of fifty bucks a pop. Nobody's buying me the what what are they called? The the Nimya the Nimya uh Yeah, the batteries. AA batteries that I just bought <laughs> like six packs of them. Nobody bought them for me. Yeah. What was it? Um, forty five bucks for twenty four of them? I thirty eight, I think. Thirty eight dollars. I think so. It's, it's crazy. Steep. Dumb. Um but I, I bought a uh I pre ordered, I should say the new stealth cam uh so it's not out yet then or no it's i think it comes out early summer okay. um but it takes 360 picture video so it's got le a lens all the way around it and i guess it'd be good for field stuff but um you can see it all directions um yeah. so i ordered that and a solar panel hmm. that way i can stick it somewhere out in the field and get yeah. 360 uh that'd be neat picture um you could so see the you could see them coming to steal it i could well yeah <laughs> yeah exactly but uh i could see i think it'd be helpful to to help you know if somebody's struggling okay well, where's the deer coming from well now you got a 360 camera and yeah. you can see where they're coming from right i'm just curious i just i never had that camera i don't even know if they if they've made one before but this I don't know. We'll see what see how it goes, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, if it works, it'd be pretty cool. Like you yeah. said, you can see the approaching deer. Yeah. You know, and hey, where do I where do I want to hang my tree stand? Well, they're coming out this corner. Okay. Right. It wasn't terribly expensive either. Hmm. It was uh it was like a hundred it was hundred and fifty four dollars. Yeah, a lot of that stuff's coming down. I think it is. There's it such is. a market. I mean, there's yeah, there's so much competitiveness right now, I think. Right. So that's yeah. good though. It brings the prices down. Yeah, they gotta be competitive. I know the plans, the sell plans come down too every yeah. year. You know, they'll get a dollar cheaper, dollar cheaper. And you get you have to. You have to be competitive with it. Yeah. I've seen um, some as low as three bucks now. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty they're getting low. You know, even you know, Tacticam, you can get one as low as five bucks. Yeah. I think know, stealth so. I think stealth's the lowest you can get is five as well. Um okay. But yeah, let's uh let's jump into this last part. <laughs> and uh, I was telling you about it before we started this. Mm -hmm. But over the weekend, I went to my property and I cut trees. Yeah. And it's on the south side, uh, south facing slope. And it was back in a bedding area that I cut in two years ago. Well, there were some uh, there were some some beech trees up there, fairly large ones that. I cut on the lower side and people that watch the video know what I'm talking about, but it was on the, it was on the lower side below my, the, the highest point of where the bedding area was. Well, I wanted 
to cut that to get more sunlight into that bedding area and also made the bedding area a little bit bigger and i cut trees down below as well but my main purpose was to get more sunlight in there into the ridge top and then also i i main focus was beech trees and maples and i cut the maples you know flush cut them and the beech trees and because i wanted the stump sprouts because back in that timbered spot in that ridge a lot of the bucks run in that area during the rut and i have a stand back there and it's it's high activity during the rut time and um i also wanted to increase the the food so and if you talk to guys um and this is why this is where I'm gonna I might get a little fired up. Um, and it refers back to two podcasts ago when I gave the the Mister Mister Miyagi speech. If you talk to say for instance Grant Woods, he'll tell you he doesn't cut the trees down. He hack and squirts them, and kills the tree standing because he do, he doesn't want to deal with the regrowth of of brows of of woody brows. He Let's a tree stand, kills it by hacking and squirting, and just allows the sunlight to come in, and then he burns it, right? Well, he's out in Missouri, okay, in a, in a warmer climate, you know, technically. Um, and that's what he does, okay? He doesn't want to cut the trees. Well, that is his way of doing it. It works for him. That's what he does. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You get another guy such as... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But you get another guy and he'll cut the trees because he wants the stump sprouts. Mm -hmm. Then you get another guy that all he wants to do is hinge cut. You know, so each person has their own way of doing it. And I, I posted this video yesterday and this guy, this guy commented today. It says, you better go back in and treat the stumps. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess. Okay. I I get it. Um, but first of all, don't tell me I better do something. Because that's just not, I, I don't like, I don't like that. Maybe make a suggestion. Right. <laughs> but don't tell somebody you better go do this. You better go do that. It's you don't know this at yeah, he don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening. So, first of all, it wasn't so many beech trees to where it's going to overtake the entire forest. You know, right. I want the stump sprouts. The deer hammer the beech tree stump sprouts. They hammer the the maple stump sprouts. Mm -hmm. I wanted that woody brows in the situation. I mean, you're in central PA. This is in western PA, west central PA. Dude, I mean, the winters are harsh. We need the brows snow i mean you get that place gets snow i mean you get snow cold i mean it's, it's bitter no again this week i heard i know and that's why i wanted these stump sprouts deer eat woody brows so i get situations where okay if you go into a complete uh timber cut a cleat complete clear cut in five seven years you're gonna have a freaking mess yeah a mess that you need to maintain okay the 10 beech trees that i cut down right my, yeah. I'm, I'm not worried about it it ruining my you know property and yeah. if okay and if it gets to a point where the stump sprouts start getting above the deer's reach i can go back in and maintain that just go flush cut it again yeah. it's just a small it's right. just a small bedding area it's not like i clear cut or, or cut a hundred trees out of seven, you know what I mean? 70 acres to where in five years, I'm going to have a heck of a time maintaining it. Each property and situation is different. For instance, I'm going to South uh, Central Virginia this weekend or this week, I leave tomorrow. And when I talked to the landowner on the phone, they're from North Carolina. And he said he loves clear cuts. He said down in North Carolina, they clear cut 80 acres, hundred acres, and they absolutely love it. The deer, they flood deer flood the area and his goal he told me he won't even be there i'm walking with his son um he wants a minimum out of these 300 acres he wants a minimum 
of 80 acres clear cut. <laughs> That's what he wants. He said, I don't want you to come out unless you're not going to at least give me 80 acres of clear cut. Wow. So I have to work within his goals and I can talk. You know, so he just wants you to lay out an area that you think 80 acres should be cleared? Yes, he wants... Out of that 300 acre plus, uh, yes. piece. Yes, it doesn't have to be continuous. It could be separate oh, okay. spots. Okay. But he just wants a total of 80 acres clear cut. Okay. And he wants me to tell him where to do that. Obviously, we're, gonna, we're doing a whole plan. But mm -hmm. the clear cut, he just wants to know where it goes because he has friends that are foresters and they can come in and clear cut it for him. Okay. I said, that's fine. So I'm going to work with them on the entire property and designing, you know, this, this, and this food plots and everything else. But, um, uh, you know, that's just my rant is that everybody does something differently. Don't tell some, I'm not going to tell you, well, I might tell you cause we're, you know, friend, we joke around, but somebody you don't know, <laughs> like don't tell them they better do something. Right, right. Every yeah, well, person, they don't know the, they don't know your situation. Yeah, they don't know, man. That's why I think people have they just have one, this they, yeah, one track mind is one track pre mind of something yes, something they did and they think that it applies to every single person. Yeah. It does not, and it bothers me so bad because it, it's in everything. Food plots, it's in baseball, football, it's in this, it's in that, it's in I mean, you could go outside walking and somebody's going to tell you you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's crazy. And I'm not bashing this guy. I don't know this guy, but it's you just, just uh, you just can't please everybody. And, no. And yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, I made a video about a bedding area. I gave an update on the bedding area. I, I showed all the brows regrowing, what trees I was cutting, the sunlight coming in. And then still you get somebody that yep. says, you better go back and blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, right. like, relax. It's not your problem. Who cares? If it overtakes my forest, what, what's it care? What do you care? Yeah. Doesn't affect you. <laughs> um, I get it. And it, he could have been just making a suggestion and maybe I was taking it wrong. I, I don't know, but, um, I just don't like when somebody says you better do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know what? If you, somebody tells me I better do it, I'm going to do it even more. Well, you better wrap it up, Dave. We are. So, all right, yeah, we'll wrap it up, and uh, next weekend I'll I'll cut more beech trees. So, well, you anyway, better, you better treat them stumps then. I know, gotta treat them. Um, you better. I will. That's all I got. All right, that was sixty-seven. See ya. Beech tree. <laughs>